Hey, welcome to another episode of Chad's Beer Reviews. Doing a very well-known beer tonight. Beer I haven't reviewed since 2009. I don't know if I've even drank it since then. World famous, or at least in America. Corona Extra. Everybody always leaves the extra out. Everybody just says Corona, but it actually is Corona Extra. There's also ex there's Corona Extra Light, too. Uh, I'm going to use a shaker glass tonight. I haven't used one of these in a long time. Look at all those bubbles sticking to the side of the glass there. Um, and I don't know if you can see this as my old Chance Beer Reviews shaker glass. You know, I had about a finger, two fingers of head. Man, that is really carbonated. I'm surprised. Um, you know, typical pea color, white gold maybe. Um, you know, head is just bright white soap suds. Let's give it an aroma test here. Mm, it's kind of like a slight kind of dirty smell. It smells more like dirt or like something just like not clean. It's not super corny like how a lot of the Coors beers that have been. I'm sure they use corn or rice in this. Um, probably corn. I think Budweiser is the only brewery that really uses rice. And they may, in Japanese and Chinese breweries use rice too. So anyways, it's been a while. Let's give good old Corona a try. Cheers. Hmm. Has a remarkably kind of sweet taste to it. Oh, and yeah, I f should have mentioned at the beginning. You know, most people when you drink Corona, you have the bottle and you just stick a lime wedge right in the neck. You very, very rarely see people getting in cans because how would you put a lime in there? Um, I'm obviously not going to do the lime thing. I did that last time. The thing is, when you drink the beer with the lime in the, in the neck of the bottle, is that all you're tasting really is is lime juice with beer wrapped around it so you don't really taste the true beer that's why a lot of people love corona that's why it's trendy and stuff and i think the 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 story behind putting the lime in the bottle was actually to keep flies out of your beer so it's like the mexican beer stein or something like that this has that kind of um yellow lollipop kind of flavor. I believe that's um, oxidation. I couldn't find a fresh date on here. I mean, there's a code on the bottom of the can, but you know, who can make heads or tails out of it? It's not as um, corn forward. Like there's, It doesn't have that tang or that sharpness that like the cores had. There's no kind of green apple puckering like the Budweiser had. It's actually much more bland than it is offensive. You know, it's ironic because um, if you saw our Great Macro Lager Showdown, we reviewed 12 beers, and Corona came in dead last. I think somebody even said it kind of smells or tastes like piss. I remember, I think, like, there was five or six of us, and everybody except for, like, one person rated it, like, the worst of the 12. Now that I'm drinking it, you know, I know what I'm drinking now. It's actually surprising, because I went into this thinking, you know, with the Macro Lager Showdown fresh on my mind, like, oh man, this is going to suck. I, I just remember that from, you know, back in uh, September. Now that I'm drinking it straight up, I'm like, you know what, this actually isn't too bad. It's not too good either, though. You're getting a little bit of lacing on the glass. That is really surprising. You, all those bubbles you saw on the glass, I, that's because this glass has been sitting in the cabinet. Who knows, remember the last time it was washed, but it was probably dirty glass, but usually you don't get lacing on a dirty glass, so maybe it was clean after all. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about this one I haven't said about you know any other macro lager, other than just that it's, you know, it's not bad, it's just kind of boring.
And it's interesting drinking it from the can. That way you don't get any of the skunkiness from the sunlight. It's a completely different beer out of the can. Ah, uh, let's try the Sunrate beer. Aroma. I mean, like I said, nothing bad. Kind of just like a general not clean smell to it. It's not horrible. I give it a four. Appearance, well, I'm kind of torn on this one. It didn't have much of a head, but the it has laced the glass, which is more than I can say for any other ones. So, and it was plenty of carbony, and it was you know so you want to see bubbles. I'll give it, a, you know, I'll give it a four on appearance too. A taste, um, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not awful, um. Certainly far from delicious. So I'll give it a four out of ten on taste. And palate, you know, I totally didn't even talk about that. Um, I mean, the beer is very smooth. Rape beer says it's four point six, which is lighter than PBR and Bud. Yeah, I mean, it does drink like a light beer. I don't. I don't. I've never even had Corona Light. I'll have to get to that sometime. Maybe I'll do like a whole light macro beer every month or something. But. Um, I mean, I wouldn't call it refreshing, but it's definitely easy to drink. You know, finish is fairly clean. No, no starchy aftertaste or anything. So yeah, uh, palate. Yeah, I guess I'll give that a four to four out of five. And overall, I mean, it's not anything brilliant or anything. I'll give it eleven out of twenty. That's a two point seven, which I think is a. All right, that's a high three. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it's not just yeah, it's tolerable. It's not quite to the above average as some of the other ones, but yeah. All right, so there we go. Corona Extra. Three out of ten from Chad's Review. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.